opens mysterious hatch and backyard finds hidden Marvel buried for decades When one couple, Kenswick and Carol Hollerswick, moved to a small town in Wisconsin, they never noticed an unusual feature sitting curiously in their garden, an unopened hatch. Over the years, it remained in place, getting rustier with time, when they finally decided to open it. When they did, they had no idea that it would end up becoming the surprise of a lifetime, a discovery of all discoveries, that had been waiting to be found right under their nose. It not only changed their lives, but would change the lives of others for years to come. The Hollerswick family had been living in their friendly but boring Wisconsin neighborhood for nearly 10 years. They were aware of the hatch, but they just never really thought to open it for all those years. Back in 1999, this family were just average people living in a small town in New Jersey. When a job offer that was too good to give up arrived, the family packed up to Wisconsin. Little did they know when looking for their home that it would turn out to be far from ordinary. What the Hollerswick family would learn years later is that fate surely brought them to the quaint Wisconsin town of Nina, where what they would discover would change everything. Despite Nina being a rather sleepy place where nothing significant ever happened, the Hollerswicks were about to purchase a property that would be very significant. The Hollerswick family finally found their dream house. It was ideal for the children due to its spacious garden. However, they had little idea that in that backyard lay a secret waiting to be found. The family was notified that something was there before they moved in, but it didn't really register. They thought it was just something left over from the old tenants. It wasn't until years later that it would create quite an impact, to say the least. As the years rolled on by, the old rusted hatch in the backyard became overrun with foliage, until it was almost out of sight. It never really crossed their minds to open that old hatch until a decade later. They were working in the garden when they decided to give it the old spring clean, until as they removed the overgrowth of brush and shrubbery, the hatch was once again in sight. Just sat there as if to say, open me already. It looked like a tornado shelter and because they had no use for that, they weren't so intrigued. The hatch, as they would soon find out, wasn't a tornado shelter at all, but something much more dark and eerie. But just what would they find after they managed to open the old rusted metal hatch and stare all the way down into the unknown? You're probably thinking, how could we let it sit there so long? Carol Holler's Wick later admitted in an interview with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, after the discovery garnered a lot of media attention. Well, we assumed it was empty, but in fact, that wasn't true at all, as we're about to find out. Actually, the hatch contained something of a time portal into the past. The property agent who had sold the Hollerswick family the house had indeed explained that before they purchased it, there was in fact an underground room below the backyard hatch. For some reason, the family just assumed nothing of it and were not even tempted to take a gander. In 2010, years later, Carol and Ken eventually got their act together to start cleaning the greenery that had overtaken the hatch. They didn't give much thought as to what was inside, until now. Finally, with all the greenery and brush cleared up off the hatch, they were able to reach the door and attempt to open it after all this time. Lo and behold, after a few attempts, it creaked open and revealed an underground chamber that had clearly been flooded with water. Of course, after the excitement set in, they couldn't wait to explore further. This would mean that they'd need to pump the water out, and so they did with a large hose. After all the fluid had been completely cleared, they found themselves in a small underground space. But the room wasn't empty. Once inside the shelter, they could tell that it was used for something important. In fact, the underground space was built for something else entirely. The space was, in fact, built as a fallout shelter fallout shelter is an enclosed space for the protection of people from radioactive debris or fallout from a nuclear explosion. Well, well, well. The shelter itself was designed to minimize exposure to dangerous radioactive debris until radiation levels were safe and it would be safe to go back to the surface. But just who had built such a shelter and why? The answer was, of course, the previous owner. There had only been one other owner of the house before the Hollers Wicks called it home. The house had been built in 1951 and was owned by a physician called Frank Panch. From municipal records, it appears that Panch started construction of the fallout shelter in the garden in 1961, around a decade after the home itself was built. But the lingering question is, why had Panch decided to build such a structure in his backyard, especially in a quiet town such as Nina, Wisconsin? See, back in the 1960s, the Cold War had reached new heights, and Panch was a cautious individual. He had the attitude that something could kick off between the USA and the Soviet Union. We'll learn that these cautionary thoughts were for good reason. 
Not long after he finished building the shelter in 1960, the Cuban Missile Crisis arrived. It was the brink of war, and many Americans feared that the USSR would use their nuclear arsenal against the American mainland. So the government warned civilians to prepare for a possible attack, which they believed was looming. So Panch jumped on this idea. He created his fallout shelter. Why would he need one all the way in Nina, Wisconsin? Well, it wasn't Nina itself that made Panch build the shelter, but the city's proximity to other locations that spurred warning bells. As Nina wasn't a likely target for the Soviet nuclear arsenal, it was, however, in the fallout zone for other nearby targets. According to one expert from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, other large cities such as Chicago and Minneapolis could have very well been on the USSR's target list, leaving Nina directly in fallout territory. Being the sensible man that he was, Panch even completed construction on his fallout shelter before President Kennedy gave his address to the public encouraging people to prepare for what could have been the worst-case scenario in 1961. What's more, Panch's shelter was no regular fallout shelter. It was extremely extraordinary. Panch constructed his fallout shelter following loose instructions from a government pamphlet printed in 1959 called the Family Fallout Shelter. It was a very serious situation indeed at the time. Family shelters were not that common because of how expensive they were to build. Nina is the third largest city in the county behind Appleton and Oshkosh that were to receive federal supplies in 1962. Following the instructional pamphlet, the fallout shelter included a very intricate infrastructure that even had a telephone line, electricity, and a ventilation system to make sure that fresh air would be able to circulate through the place. The main chamber of the shelter was built at right angles because, according to the pamphlet, this would help fight radiation. However, that wasn't all. His forward thinking ensured that Panch, of course, filled the shelter with everything that he felt was necessary in case of an emergency. However, because the entire shelter had been flooded, it made sense that the Holler's Wicks believed that there wouldn't be anything still salvageable. Oh, how wrong they were! To their sheer bewilderment and amazement, everything a person could ever have needed remained inside the shelter. Laying there for decades inside the shelter remained bunk beds, a lantern, and folding toilet. But that wasn't all. There was even enough food and supplies to last for weeks. What's more, there were also other items that hadn't been opened and Ken and Carol simply couldn't leave them unexplored. Regardless of water damage to some of the items inside, a collection of unopened airtight boxes had survived, and Ken and Carol lifted them out. They were truly dumbfounded when they opened the boxes to find that 50 years after Panch had stocked the fallout shelter, their incredible contents were still there and mostly in reasonable condition. The couple opened the boxes to discover survival kits, which took them on a trip back in time to the 1960s. Inside, they found old-fashioned boxes of Kellogg's cornflakes, tins of Flavor Kiss saltines, and packets of chocolate chip cookies. There was one box that they were a bit nervous to open. This box looked like an old ammunition box. They didn't want to take any chances at this point, so they thought to call the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. A team arrived at the scene of the discovery to inspect the unusual box, but no one could have expected what they saw next. In fact, it so happened that the box was full of Hawaiian punch. They were over the moon with their solved mystery. However, one question still remained. What were they going to do with all the vintage items they found? It's interesting that you could open up something and find 1960 inside of it, Carol Hollerswick said in an interview with the Appleton Post Crescent. She then explained how the fallout shelter was in reality just like a time capsule. After that exciting day, the family decided that they didn't want to keep the historic find and would rather share this incredible discovery with the whole community, so they donated the contents to the Nina Historical Society. But their story didn't end there. In May of 2013, all of the Hollerswick's fallout shelter findings became a cool display as part of an exhibit centered around the classic 1960s home in Nina, Wisconsin. The items from the fallout shelter were displayed with old TV shows, books, and radios playing public service announcements. They felt so proud to have contributed to this and for others to be able to get a sense of how times were then because of what they found in their backyard. Thank goodness they decided to give their garden a spring clean.